Hi, I'm Kevin. For dinner tonight, we're fixing chicken fricassee. And the reason we're making this comforting dish is because right now it is snowing like crazy here. Maybe we'll take a break during the video so that I can show you the winter wonderland outside. Anyway, we'll go over the ingredients for chicken fricassee as we use them. So chicken fricassee is simply chicken pieces that are sautéed and then uh, mixed with some vegetables that are also sautéed and then everything gets finished in the oven in a lovely whiny cream sauce. Totally delicious. So what I'm doing is adding some butter, about a tablespoon of butter, and also a tablespoon of olive oil to my 12-inch skillet here. And the skillet is set over medium-low heat. I'm going to let the butter melt. And then, I'm going to add some salt and pepper directly to the skillet. This way I don't have to season the individual pieces of chicken. Here's the pepper. Always freshly ground for the best taste. And here's the chicken. So I have two drumsticks and four thighs. Uh, so that's six pieces, but this pan is certainly large enough to do eight pieces. So if you have more mouths to feed than I do, go ahead and do eight pieces. And I did dry the chicken very well in, with paper towels. And I, I lay the chicken into the skillet. The underside automatically becomes coated with salt and pepper. And I'm going to sauté these until the uh, chicken is deeply browned on each side. That will be, well, probably four minutes per side, so we'll be back. All right, when the chicken is nice and brown, this was about, oh, seven or eight minutes in total, transfer it to a plate, and we will be finishing the cooking of the chicken in the oven. Also, very important, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're going to saute the vegetables. So I'm going to add another little knob of butter. Swirl it about. And then, for the vegetables, you can really add anything you like. I'm going to add about half of one large onion that I roughly dice. And eight ounces of mushrooms that I slice. And for beta carotene, some carrots. These are like three medium carrots that I cut into roughly eight inch thick slices. And I did slice them on the bias. In they go. Grab a spatula and you want to make sure all of the veggies are coated with the chicken fat and the butter. And then we're going to let these cook oh, for about 10 minutes. We want them to develop just a little bit of color. All right, the veggies are beginning to color. And what I've been doing every couple of minutes is just shaking the pan and flipping the veggies. So now we can add some flour to tablespoons, two generous tablespoons of flour. This is going to help to thicken the sauce. Well, it's not going to just help it. It is going to thicken the sauce.
You just stir that in. I'm going to add a little more butter. I know this is a butter rich dish, but as I said, it's a very comforting dish, especially during a snowstorm. Yeah, stir this in for about one minute. You want the flour to cook. This way you won't have a raw flour tasting sauce. Okay, I think we're good here. So now it's time to add the wine. What I have here is a half cup of Sauvignon Blanc and a half cup of dry French vermouth. You could use all the French vermouth or all Sauvignon Blanc or even Pinot Grigio for the wine. And no, there is no substitute for the wine. I'm sorry. Although if you absolutely can't have wine, I guess you could just add, oh, a cup of chicken stock. Speaking of which, we will be adding chicken stock as soon as this wine reduces just a little. I'm going to crank up the heat. Yeah, look at how thick this sauce is becoming already. In fact, it's too thick, but we are going to thin it out with chicken stock. And later, we're going to finish the dish with some heavy cream. Comforting, yes. Okay, it's time for the stock. What I have here is actually bone broth that I made myself in the Instant Pot. So this is about one and a half cups of bone broth. I'm going to let this come to the boil. I hope I told you to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Because that's where this dish is soon headed. Okay. Now I'm going to add some herbs. And what I have here are fresh herbs. You can use dry if you'd like. I have about eight sprigs of thyme. I hope you can see that all right. And one large fat sprig of rosemary. Fresh parsley would be good here too, but I don't have any. Sage would be good too, and I have it in my herb garden, but I don't feel like trudging through the snow to fetch it. Okay, put that in, and then return the chicken. Ooh, this looks good already. And again, I'm using six pieces of chicken. You could use eight. Now, I'm going to pop this into the oven for, oh, about 45 minutes, so we'll be back. Okay, while the chicken is doing its thing in the oven, here's the snow, and again, we're expecting, like, I don't know, 14 to 18 inches. This is the boxwood garden behind the house. Here's one of the fountains. There's another fountain over here somewhere. Yeah, a lot of snow coming. Let's see if we can find Avery. Yep, here's Avery on a couch in the library. I have a lot of pillows and a comforter on this couch. Actually, it's a love seat. <laughs> she looks very snug and warm. Hi, baby. Can you say hello? Nope. 
and boy is she camera shy. Okay, let's go find Binky since so many people have asked about baby Binky. And here's baby Binky on my bed. Hi Binky, how you doing? How you doing, sweetie? Doesn't she have a cute face? Yeah, this is the kitten that I rescued from, well, she was about 10 minutes from death when I rescued her. And she's a teenager now, and boy, is she playful. Watch, if I try to straighten up the, oh, there she goes. Yeah, she'll go after my hand if I try to smooth out the bedspread. And here's the chicken fricassee right out of the oven. Again, that was 45 minutes. What I'm going to do is remove the bouquet garni, the herbs that I tied with string. And by the way, I tied them with string so that I didn't have to pick off all of the little uh, leaves from the woody thyme stems. Now, what I'm going to do is add some cream. I'm also going to add one ingredient that I forgot to add while I was making the dish for you, and that is garlic paste. And I'm adding the equivalent of, hi Tiger, that's Tiger the cat. Um, yeah, in the list of ingredients, you'll find minced garlic added. Uh, hang on, I need a spoon, or rather my spatula, and I just want to stir that in. Uh, and also remember that this pan was in the oven. It is red hot, so when you take it out, be sure to use oven mitts. That mixed in. Yeah, I love garlic paste because, well... You can add it at any time. It's not going to burn. Now we have to add the cream. An ungodly amount. About half a cup. Stir that in. Ooh, this looks rich and inviting. And so perfect for this snowy weather. Now, here we are. I'm also going to give this dish a shower of parsley. Uh, this is parsley from my garden that I dried and popped into a jar. Yum. Okay, I'm going to plate this up and then I'll come right back. Okay. So I'm going to serve this fricassee on a bed of rice, which I prepared earlier. This is jasmine rice. And since it's only me for dinner, I think I'll just have a chicken thigh and then some of this gorgeous, aromatic, veggie-rich sauce. I'll put around the rice. Isn't this pretty? And of course, I have to have a taste. We are a bit of chicken. Okay, it's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Let me try a carrot. Hot. It's a very hot, very delicious carrot. Mm. Well, I hope you will give this devilishly delicious chicken fricassee a try someday. The cream and wine sauce alone is like, well, it's gonna knock your socks off, okay? And thank you for watching. Please subscribe and please post a comment below. I do read all of your comments and I really love hearing from you. All right, I'll see you soon with another recipe. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.